want me to want me to do it while you? We'll just grab your mic. There's all kinds of stuff going on today, so. So the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We sing together. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our brother Bruce Edward. 
We thank you for giving him to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us your aid so that we may see in death the gate to eternal life, that we may continue our course on earth in confidence until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before us. We pray this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Be seated. This is My Father by Kirsten Ellingson. I see a man standing on a rocky beach. Waves wash over his feet and a cool breeze blows. As he bends down, searching the ground for something special, suddenly laughing, he gives a shout of joy. We rush over to see what he has found. Proudly he picks it up, a beautiful rock, an agate, just a, just a pebble, but much, much more. He washes it in the water of the lake and tells us a now familiar story. When I was a little boy, it always starts. He tells of many trips to the same lake shore. We all look up across Lake Superior, and I stand with my father in, in the place he loves. You know, someday, he says, I would like to sail on a big warship across Lake Superior. It is in my blood, too. And I understand we are very alike, my father and I. Bruce was my little brother by three years, but in so many ways, he was my big brother. Most importantly, we had the best parents. Shirley and Sid Ellingson, were, yes, quite reserved Norwegians, but kind, caring, and respectful. As the years went by, Bruce and I often talked about them and how they shaped us and how lucky we were. During our grade school and high school years, Bruce was that little brother, present in the house, oftentimes annoying, although now I can't remember why, but he largely did not impact my life. As he once commented to Kevin, when Karen got to high school, junior high school, she went into her room, closed the door, and never came out. <laughs> he did things I didn't understand, like trapping gophers with neighbor Paul, who's here, because the county paid for gopher feet. In high school, he played basketball. He was nominated one year for king of the sweetheart ball. We had to force him to get a date. He never, was, he never was interested in the opposite sex until he met Joyce. Our mother loved sports. Of course, in her day, girls' sports in high school didn't exist. She loved baseball, basketball, Lindsey Whalen, and Bruce's love of sports, especially baseball, came from her. On one memorable occasion, we went to Minneapolis from Elbow Lake, our little town of 1,500, and three hours away to see the twins. There was this guy named Harmon Killebrew. I was told he was a big deal. Bruce and my mom were really excited and were glued to the action. My dad and I enjoyed people watching. Bruce also got his aptitude for mathematics and his organized brain from my mom. She was a bookkeeper and made lists. Bruce had to-do lists and had the kind of organized brain that I envied. You make a list, you get it done, and you check it off. When we were in high school, we had other occasions to come to Minneapolis. Bruce's connection to Central Lutheran actually began then. In the 60s, we attended a Sunday service here at Central. Central was like a cathedral to us. Our little church in Elbow Lake paled in comparison. We marveled at the beauty of this building. 
And when the organ burst forth in all its glory, I looked at my dad, and he was crying. How fitting that Central played such a big part in Bruce's life and in Joyce's life. Our father was a devout steward. He took care of things. In the 50s and 60s, he rode a bike to work. He conserved and wasted nothing. We inherited a special kind of sensitivity from him, which I saw over and over again in Bruce and Joyce's lives. And because of our dad, we came to know the North Shore and Lake Superior, which we love. The older I get, and as we face even more serious challenges as a society, I appreciate more and more the humanity of people like my brother and Joyce. I admire and love him because he was caring, thoughtful, respectful, compassionate. He could evolve and think through issues and change his position if necessary. This was especially significant to me because back in the 70s, he thought I was an off-the-wall radical. He loved Joyce and committed to a lifelong relationship, and he cared for her to the end in the most tender of ways. He and Joyce raised two incredibly smart, caring, compassionate, creative children, Kevin and Kirsten. He contributed to what I guess we call the greater good in so many ways. He volunteered his accounting skills at Immigrant Law Center when we were just starting out as a fledgling nonprofit and I was thrust into the scary role of executive director. He continued his support of Immigrant Law Center through the years and that made me so very, very proud. I am aware of all the work he did here at Central in various capacities and I recently learned about Joyce's push to get composting in place. And I've heard many stories about Bruce and his usher buddies. On Sunday, September 15th, when he was taken from the Pillars Senior Living Facility, where he last lived, late that night, all of the nursing assistants stood to honor him. How many times did I hear, Bruce was a sweetheart. He was so kind and appreciative. It was tough to hear them talking in the past tense, but we know that he was greeted and welcomed by our family's many precious angels. I believe he and Joyce's spirits will be found and felt in many places, here at Central, with our families and their many friends, but without a doubt, their spirits will be found. Up along the lake, we consider sacred ground in our family, Lake Superior, and they will be hiking together and looking for agates. I'm Kevin, I'm Bruce's son. Uh, he asked that I read something that he wrote, and he also said I could say whatever else I wanted to, so. Here we are. Uh, we buried my grandpa Sid, that's dad's dad, out at Ness Cemetery in Elbow Lake, west of town there. That's where dad grew up. And standing at the graveside then, dad said to me, he was a good man, don't forget him. And I've been thinking about those words and the feelings of love and respect behind them. And years after his parents died, dad would still say, geez, I miss mom and dad. My wife Molly and I have a daughter who was born uh, early this year, and I just love this kid so much. And it's incredible, and it's also so humbling to just have this realization that my parents felt that way about me, too. And it's this love that you know, can't be earned and not lost. And it was just reinforced through almost every day that I had with them, had with him in my life. I was fortunate enough to feel that, because not everyone gets that. When Molly and I moved to New York some years ago, saying goodbye to my parents at the train station, I really felt how much my dad would miss me, like me as a person. And all of this created this deep respect that I had for him. He was kind, lighthearted, playful and warm. And that's Norwegian warm, so a bit of grading on a curve there. 
but he was a good man. Don't forget him. Now, what, uh, much of what you're about to hear from him, I can attest to. Uh, his love for my mom, complete and absolute. Uh, a Minnesota sports fan through and through, which he got from his mother, as Karen mentioned. I remember raking leaves with him, radio pointed out the window of the house, listening wide-eyed to Ray Christensen with the call as Glenn Mason's Gophers upset Penn State and Happy Valley. And the North Shore, gosh yes, hours and hours on those rock beaches looking for agates. And every time, Dad saying wistfully, if I could just find one this big. It's easy to think if there is a heaven that he's found that agate now, but I think he would tell you his heaven was sitting there by the water, searching, shoes and socks off, hands cupped to scoop just a little deeper in the rocks, surely in the next layer. My mom sitting back a bit, deep in a book, Kirsten and me doing whatever it was we were doing, looking for rocks, sitting next to mom, sitting next to dad, running around. I read once of a theory in physics that went something like, if all of this that we see is made up of different particles, and if there is a finite number of particles and combinations, and if the universe is infinite, then somewhere this combination right here repeats. And it repeats even more with small variations. So there is another room just like this, with people just like us, having a moment just like now to honor a man just like him. And also a lake like Superior with a shoreline and still a family and an agate just this big. Now here's dad. I have so many things I'm thankful for, this could be a very long reading, but I will try to keep it on the shorter side. I have much gratitude for the medical care I received. The kindness, compassion, and skill were outstanding. They were unbelievably kind and supportive. In addition, I have much gratitude for relatives, friends, and acquaintances who provided transportation, food, treats, books, and other things during my cancer battle. Furthermore, I have so much gratitude for the personnel and services at Central Lutheran. Several services at Central on Saturday night were geared towards those suffering from the grief of losing loved ones and or suffering from cancer and disease. In fact, Pastor Peter talked of a cancer victim who had emphasized a glimpse of gratitude during treatment. It was so comforting to hear that, and I realized many times it became a situation of overwhelming gratitude. But I think the gratitude can be overwhelming. Do I have any regrets? Of course, the Vikings are 0-4 in the Super Bowl. The Gophers have not been to the Rose Bowl since the 60s, and that setup is long gone. Seriously, most of my regrets are caused by my behavior or my words, so I apologize to those affected. My dear wife, Joyce, who was diagnosed with cancer in 2016, never complained about her situation. She passed away on October 10, 2020, four years ago today after 43 years of our marriage. This was 10 months after we lost our daughter Kirsten and our grandsons William and Nelson. The last five years have been difficult, but there are several things that have helped me significantly. First and foremost, the North Shore and its forests, in particular the area past Grand Marais. Joyce uh, had told me to look for her on the Superior Hiking Trail. So I spent much time in the woods, hiking the trail, and also just wandering in the forests, but of course, with a compass. In addition, I also spent much time on the shoreline of Lake Superior looking for agates. These places were the only places where I was at peace. I believe I had an encounter with Joyce on the trail uh, by the Cadence River, but I won't go into that with you now. Working out at the YMCA, uh, with my wonderful trainer and friends and exercise classes provided tremendous benefits. Physical benefits, of course, but also mental benefits. And Central Lutheran Church personnel and services provided knowledge, caring and compassion in visits, services, and maintaining contact. It is easy to be overwhelmed with gratitude, 
by others' actions and words. I have always been a sports fan too, just mention the Twins, Vikings, Gophers, Timberwolves, the last few years the Meeseville Mud Hens, you get who I'm a fan of. Once diagnosed, I did cross the Vikings off my list of hopefulness, did not want to think about the possibility of going 0-5 in the Super Bowl. Okay, I will tell you of my possible encounter with Joyce on the Superior Hiking Trail. When I stayed up there, I stayed at a little motel about eight miles past Grand Marais. And every morning I would have my coffee, then eat breakfast, then go out, uh, perhaps hike on the Superior Hiking Trail. One morning I decided for whatever reason to go for a short hike first and then have my coffee. So I headed out on a trail that connected with the Superior Hiking Trail, and that trail put me next to the Cadence River. I reached a nice point near the river and turned around, and there I saw the prettiest doe I have ever seen. Now Joyce and I had never seen deer while hiking on the Superior Hiking Trail, but there was this doe. We stood and looked at each other eye to eye for about 10 seconds or so, and then the doe just slowly and quietly walked away. Was it Joyce? You can decide, but I think so. One last note about Joyce. On February 7th, during the fifth week of my radiation, I had a dream of Joyce. I recall it specifically. In it, we were together. Joyce asked me if I was ready to go home now. I told her, no, I need to pick up some groceries. I think I blew the answer to that question. I laughed and cried as I remembered that dream, but I think I finally answered that question correctly. So in conclusion, I have much to be thankful for. With any kind of luck, I have reconnected with Joyce, Kirsten, William, Nelson, Ileana, babies that perished, Shirley, Minus, Sydney, Stanley. God bless you all.
Readings. Each scripture reading will end. Word of God, word of life. Please respond. Thanks be to God. A reading from Lamentations. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord, and for the Lord will not reject forever. Although he causes grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love, for he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. A reading from Psalms. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes it boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him, and be radiant so your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord and was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. <clears throat> o oh, fear the Lord, you his holy ones. For those who fear him have no want. The young lions suffer in want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. Word of God, word of life. A reading from Ecclesiastes. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. Word of God, word of life. Thank you, God.
In a few of the visits with Bruce with an IPA, he said, you better preach Thanksgiving and comedy or you'll be in trouble. So let's see how we do it. Shall we do that? How do we frame this day? Well, we have to think about an image that sustains us, and that image is courage. So that's the word I'll leave you with today. It's not maybe necessarily directly named in all of the lessons, but it is a subtle subtext that you even heard in Kevin's reflections and his dad's words. You might think that it's the courage that runs into a burning building like firefighters or the courage of those that serve in the military who stand in the way of harm for the vulnerable. Those are the places of courage where there are medals and honor and flags of all those stripes. But this is not the courage we're going to meditate on today. This is the courage that David White calls the courage of the heart and the soul and the mind. He reminds us that there are the outward expressions of courage, the running into burning buildings, but for most of our lives, it is the more deeper work of much more nuanced and complex courage that's called for. It's fascinating that it comes from the French word, which is the heart. Courage is a matter of the heart. We hear it in lamentations like, God is good to those who wait, the soul that seeks. We should wait quietly because waiting would not seem to be this overtly courageous activity, and yet in the matters of the heart, waiting, waiting in grace, waiting in hope, waiting for healing, may be one of the most courageous things that we can do together. It is a place of deep vulnerability where we would live even on a whisper, on a silent prayer. The psalm is an interesting psalm because every verse of the psalm begins with one of the letters of the Hebrew alphabet, chronologically moving through the alphabet. It's an interesting image of what Bruce has left out of the psalm. The verses that he left out for us would take a serious moment of the courageous heart, and maybe he wanted to spare us that today. We would be forced to ponder the nature of evil, the hope for peace, the wondering about protection, the God of the brokenhearted. He jumps to the ending, which interestingly enough was a late edition, which talks about the Lord redeeming and restoring. And in the oldest understanding of the word redeeming, it is to take you to a place that heals. To take you to a place that heals, like the North Shore. And of course, Ecclesiastes, the ancient cadence, absurd partners, dialectic or paradox, depending on what you like, but all of them require the most intimate form of courage, which is the breath between. A time for this, a time for that. A time for this, a time for that. And we all know in our courageous lives that it's in that pause where true courage is called for because it's never either or. It's always both, usually at the same time, which makes it so complicated for our lives. It makes us vulnerable. If it's a matter of the heart, Parker Palmer reminds us that the challenge is that the heart, when it is supple, can be broken open to greater capacity to hold our own and the world's pain that happens every day. When we hold our suffering in a way that opens us to greater compassion, heartbreak actually becomes a place of healing and empathy and expansiveness. When our hearts are hard or we want control or to contain them, what happens when our hearts break is they shatter. They shatter like stained glass and become shards that cut and wound ourselves and others. The courageous heart is the supple heart that's willing to be broken open, not to cut or wound, but to hold all of the complexity. So it is with a courageous heart today, your courageous hearts, Bruce's courageous hearts, a little peanut's courageous heart. <laughs> don't worry about her at all. She's the belle of the ball today, so we don't worry about that. 
that I want to say some words of thank you as well. Bruce added his in. So I want to thank you for your courageous heart, for the journey into the complexities, for all the visits, the laughter, the care, for all of the things that you have provided. So of course, thank you to Kevin and Molly and the Bell of the Ball. Thank you to each of the family members for your continual and consistent love. From moving and hanging pictures and taking care of all the details in Bruce's life, thank you for all of that. Thank you to the hospice care workers and the nurses and the staff, as Bruce already named, the pillar staff, Bruce's trainer, longtime friends, members of the congregation, to the infamous in this community, the four horsemen of the apocalypse who would get Bruce out for lunch, Central members, my central pastoral colleagues, staff, Karen, Michael, Dwayne, and Dave, and Sarah, and the list goes on and on. On a visit to the Pillars, if you had a chance to be there, and we've heard that, Karen named it as well, I was waiting to get into Bruce's room. He was getting overwhelmed with visitors, so they were monitoring. He had a bouncer. Bruce had a bouncer because of all the people that wanted to see him. And a woman said, who are you? And I said, well, I'm one of the pastors from Central. She said, I got to tell you, in 30 years that I have been providing care, I have never seen so many family, friends, church people. She said, what, what church do you go to? You are crazy people. <laughs> you are here all the time, and all I hear is laughter and joy and music and all kinds of celebration going on. She said, you know, this is all a matter of the heart. And I said, it is exactly a matter of the heart because Bruce said, if you're going to show up, you better show up to laugh, you better show up to celebrate, better show up for Thanksgiving, better show up with the fullness of who you are, which is the hearts that we know that can be broken, broken wide open, but then increase our capacities for love, for grace, for mercy. David White continues, Courage is the measure of our heartfelt participation with life, one another, with community, in a word with the future. Bruce understood that power of the community to return to Central when it was the hardest times to come back after the loss of Joyce, but the need to be back in community, the courageousness and what White says best of all is most of the time we never really even see where our courage has lied until we look back. Then we see the moments where there has been astounding courage. Isn't that true today? Astounding courage. What was courageous for Bruce was to remain in a faith community and back in the routine of life. The courage to journey into the solitude of the North Shore the spirituality of water, trees, wind, and rain, the courage, even in the midst of doubt or downright anger at God, to turn back to his William Barclay commentaries that he loved to have at his side and read through that expansive Scottish universalist, if I would go that far, which I think I will, the expansiveness of who knows, and as Bruce would say, who has to know? That's life in the city. <laughs> Then there was this funeral request that I had to have comedy. And I am not a very good joke teller. So this kid in high school likes another kid and asks the kid to go to prom. And to this kid's surprise, the person says yes. So this kid wants it to be a special night, so goes to get a tuxedo and then wants to get a limo rented and nice flowers. For first goes to the tuxedo rental store and the line is so long that this kid has to wait and wait and wait and gets the last tuxedo on the shelf, then races over to rent the limo and there too the line is so long, has to wait and wait and wait and wait for the, the limo rental. And then by the time this kid gets to the flower shop, it's almost closed and the kid has to take the last of the flowers that are available after waiting in line, waiting forever. But eventually then, tuxedo on, limo, flowers, kid goes and picks up the date, and they get to the prom, and the date says, I need something to drink. And so the kid says, I'm going to go get you some punch, and gets there and finds that there is no punchline.
Told you I can't tell jokes. <laughs> Which has more courage, a rock or a tree? A rock, because it's bolder. I didn't say these were going to be good jokes. Bruce, I'm sorry. I'm doing my best up here. I told my partner that they should embrace their mistakes, and they gave me a hug. <laughs> oh, that's a good groaner, right, Obi? You can have to use that later, but anyway. So here are two of Bruce's favorites, which Judy Hedman shared with me, and I had almost forgotten. They were on a trip with CDO, one of the CDO trips, and, uh, and uh, Bruce and Joyce were there, and Judy Hedman and Bruce were pondering ways to do a fundraiser because the building needed some capital replacement, and Bruce was all on to the Fiscal and Property Committee. So we had this idea that we needed to come up with the Beefcake Usher Calendar of the Month. <laughs> Picture, he said, Patrick Egan in January, Rod Richter in February, Bob Tufford having March. He said, I could take April or May, but you would need to have a lot of roses to cover up what no one wants to see on the beefcake calendar of the month for the ushers. This was required, you know, so I had to do this. His favorite story, which is a little body, has to do with dear Joyce. When Joyce was a couple months out from her death, she was struggling, and that night he was getting her ready for bed, changing her clothes, getting her pajamas on, and all that stuff, and Joyce's memory was kind of coming and going, and all that stuff was going on, and he was helping her out, and she looked at him as he was trying to help her get her clothes off, and Joyce said, Sir, what are your intentions? <laughs> Bruce said they ended up just laying on the bed laughing, so hard at that moment because as we all know in the depths of tragedy and loss in the great mystery of life what is the redemption that we have but laughter and one another and caring for one another that was the story of this whole thing there are times to weep and there are times to laugh and sometimes they are what at the same time simultaneous hearts are held by God a broken open God a God in Jesus who has given Bruce that fullness, God's heart broken open to hold all things, the weeping, the laughing, the living, the dying, the possibilities of your life and mine. Maybe that's what Bruce invites us to, Kevin and Molly and Ma's in body. We all celebrate with the family that we would be willingly people who allow our hearts to be broken open for greater capacity to love one another and this weary world, for laughter and tears and hope, and together to say, thanks be to God for Bruce. I invite you to stand, if you're able, today for our prayers for Bruce and family and our shared journey. I'll say, God, of mercy, and your response today is, hear our prayer. Holy God, in baptism you've knit your people together into one communion of saints, the body of Christ. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. God of mercy, give courage and faith to all who mourn. Give a sure and certain hope of your loving care to cast their sorrow on you for strength for the days ahead. Open our hearts, Lord, to hearts of courage that can hold both weeping and laughter at the same time. God of mercy, and help us to commend to you, Bruce, and by your grace to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the cosmic possibilities of life everlasting. God of mercy. Prayer. God of all grace, we give you thanks because by his death, our Savior Jesus Christ destroyed the power of death 
and by his resurrection gives the promise of life everlasting. Bless us with the certainty that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come will be able to separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thank you so much for being here today to surround the family with your love and support. And we have a great reception. Joyce and Bruce always had cheese and crackers and cashews and olives and beer and wine. Good IPA, good glass of wine, and sometimes warm pretzels with mustard. Guess what? You get all of that today 
chance to come out and celebrate and give thanks and be a part of this great family tradition that they all hold. A nice beefy IPA would be Bruce's big thing, so that would be great. And uh, of course, we always have non-alcoholics. I want to be clear about those pieces, lemonade, coffee, and all those things today. At the end of the service, we're going to recess out. The family's going to go down to the columbarium for a private family, time down there for the burial, and you all are invited to go out and start the party. Don't stand around like Lutherans looking at each other. You know if you're already thinking about a glass of wine, go get the glass of wine. If you want lemonade, go get it. Go through the line, eat cheese and crackers. The pretzels will be nice and toasty warm. So do that. And then the family will come back up and find you all, and we can celebrate uh, this great life uh, well lived together. Sound good? All right. Let's stand for our farewell commendation and then the singing of our hymn before we go out. Bruce, our companion in faith, we had trust to you. Go forth in the world in the love of God who created you, in the mercy of Jesus who died for you, in the power of the Holy Spirit who receives and protects you. May you rest in peace and rise in glory, where pain and grief are banished and life and joy are yours forever. Into your hands, O oh merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Bruce Edward, Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Rest eternal, grant him, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon him.
and now receive the blessing. The risen Christ give you all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name, in the name of, of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.